Hello guys, welcome back to yet another module. Today we're gonna to be talking about two techniques and two things that you wanna avoid when it comes to podcasting. So the first technique that we're going to talk about is something that I like to call side speaking. And it helps to cut out one of the things that you want to avoid, which is called sibilance. Sibilance is when you have a, a very popped frequency, usually when it comes to the letter S, and that pops out above everything else, and it is very annoying. Now, there are ways to get rid of it in post, but there is one way that you can get rid of it when you're actually recording out on the field. So the way that I like to help get rid of sibilance is by employing something that I call side speaking. So usually you'd talk straight into the microphone just like this, speaking straight into the microphone. However, that helps to, no, it doesn't help, but it doesn't help mitigate the actual sibilance. So what you can do is turn your head slightly and turn the microphone just a little bit to capture. That way you're, the microphone is meeting and your voice is going out, you're not speaking directly into the capsule of that microphone, and that usually helps to mitigate those popped S's and that sibilance that you are getting. Now, another thing that we have to talk about is the proximity effect. The proximity effect happens, well, with different microphones, it sounds different, so first things first, you need to know which microphone actually works well with the proximity effect, but it's effectively the closer you get to a microphone, the more it is going to enhance the bass in your voice, the more that bass frequency is going to be hyped. So if I'm speaking away from the microphone and I start to slowly come towards the microphone, it is naturally going to start boosting that bass frequency due to the proximity effect. This is something that broadcasters, radio personality use to their advantage. You'll see them speaking directly on top of the microphone. They're basically eating the microphone, and that's because they want to take advantage of this proximity effect. Like I said, it doesn't work well in every single microphone. It happens in every microphone, but it doesn't work well in every microphone. Usually works better in dynamic microphones just like this one. The last thing that you have to avoid is comb filtering. Now, comb filtering is a phenomenon that happens when you have sound that's reflecting back and coming back into the microphone at a similar rate from when it actually was captured in the first place, in the original source. So let's say I uh, push this microphone right in front of a wall and I say, hello, super loud. Well, it's going to record hello as soon as I say it and then that hello is going to bounce off that wall and get back into the microphone mere seconds after I said hello in the first place. That can cause something called comb filtering, and it is effectively when frequencies are actually scooped out and you lose frequencies in the source that you are recording. This results in a tinny, weak, uh, unprofessional, just bad sound that you don't want. So the way to avoid comb filtering is to always push yourself away from a solid surface. Now, if you have like a pillow and you're recording an inch away from a pillow, then it doesn't matter because that soft material is going to absorb that sound. But if you have hard surfaces, hard reflective surfaces, always try and push yourself as far away from those surfaces as possible and always try and record also on a soft surface so that that sound doesn't bounce down from the hard floor and get back up into your microphone as well. That helps to prevent the comb filtering. So the last thing that we're going to talk about is how to help get rid of reverb. Now, reverb is, it's better than comb filtering, for that's for sure. Comb filtering is when the sound bounces back in, in mere seconds or milliseconds, but reverb is when that sound bounces off of a surface, it takes longer to reflect and be recaptured in the microphone. The less reverb you have, the better, especially for podcasting. So, how you help to get rid of it or help to dampen that reverb is by having lots of soft sources around. So, recording on a car carpet so that you don't have that bounce, putting up sound blankets, sound deadening blankets, even just moving blankets around your environment so that way it's um, the sound takes longer to bounce back and it loses some of its energy in the bounce back. All of these things can help to deaden the sounds of your environment to give you a nice and dry room recording. The less sound that you have recording wise, the better. Because nobody wants to hear your podcast like this they want to hear it nice, close, and dead. 
Thank you guys for joining in on this module, and I will catch you guys in the next one.